Hi everyone. Okay, today we are going to revise on the topic on states of matter. All right, it is a topic in the in the theme cycles, and today we are looking at states of matter. All right. Okay, so what is matter? Can you name what are the two main things that you need to remember about matter? Okay, let's quickly jump into the two main things. Okay, matter is anything that has mass and occupies space. So what exactly is mass? Okay, mass you realize that mass it refers to every matter, okay, that uh, actually has some kind of substance. Okay, more substance means that it's heavier, it has more mass. Okay, compare yourself to me. Who has more mass? That's right, I have more mass. And if you put me on the weighing scale and you realize that I'm 70 kilograms, what about you? How heavy are you? What is your mass? You realize that I have more substance, as in you look at me physically, I'm bigger size. And for, for you, you may be smaller size and therefore you have less mass. Okay. Alright, before we go to which is matter and which is not matter. Okay, let's come back to this. Alright. Mass is uh, matter is basically anything that has mass and occupies space. You realize that right now I'm sitting right in front of you. I'm occupying a certain amount of space. All right. If I move out of this chair, you realize that I'm not occupying the space there. Okay. So I am matter. Okay. It's not just for non-living things, but for living things as well. All right. So again, matter. It is anything that has mass and occupy space. Another word for occupy space, it refers to volume. So the same thing I can say that matter has mass and it has volume. Okay, clear enough? Alright, let's dive right in. Okay, we look at uh, matter, there are three different states. Okay, so we have solid, liquid and gas. We're going to look at solid first. What comes to your mind when you think of solid materials? Okay, solid. Okay, it refers to some things that have definite shape and it has definite volume, which is also means that it has a fixed shape and it has a fixed volume. For example, let's look at the marble here. Okay, the shape is round and you realize that it has a fixed shape I can't really change this no matter how I, uh, even if I drop this, even if I put it in the microwave, I take it out, it is still the same shape. Okay, and you realize that uh, it has a, it occupies a fixed volume, a fixed space. So it has a fixed volume, it does not change. All right, I may put it into a cup. It occupies the space inside this little plastic beaker. All right, so it has a volume to it. Okay. We cap on this. It has solid is anything that has definite shape and definite volume. Let's come to liquids. Yes, that's the fun part. Let's come to liquids. All right, liquids. It has no definite shape, and it has, however, it has a definite volume. Let's look at volume first. All right. Right in front of me here, I have a flask. This is called a conical flask. And you realize that the flask, it has 100 milliliters of water. All right? And it is red in color. Okay, 100 milliliters. I've used a marker to just uh, draw on the side so that it's a little bit clearer for you to see on this video. And I've used a little bit of red dye. So you see it's 100 milliliters of water. Okay, so this is, it has a fixed volume of 100 milliliters here. Okay, so right now, if I'm going to change, put it into another container, another glass beaker, you realize that as I transfer it over, it still remains as... Can you see this? 
Yes, it is still 100 milliliters. It does not change. The volume remains the same. Okay, so it has a fixed volume. The volume doesn't change at all. Even if I were to pour into another measuring cylinder, okay, do you think that you reach the 100 milliliters mark? Let's have a look. There. Do you see? It reaches the 100 milliliters mark as well. So it tells you that regardless okay, of where I put this, it has the, the volume remains the same. Okay, the volume does not change. Now, if I will, you realize that the, all the different containers here, I have, uh, they are of different, yes, they are different shape. Okay, you realize that this is, it looks rather fat, while this looks a little bit thin. Okay, and uh, regardless of whether I pour it in, will it still remain as one thin column in this fat beaker? No, it just takes up the shape of this beaker okay and you realize that oh it became all flat it's no longer thin and uh going all the way up to the 100 milliliters mark okay the same thing when i place it into a conical flask from here over to the cone shape is this still the same shape no it's a different shape so regardless of the shape, yeah, it, it is still 100 milliliters, but it does not have a fixed shape. If I have a cup right in here, which is in the shape of a Mickey Mouse, it will just take the shape of a Mickey Mouse. All right. Okay, now, so just to recap, liquids, he has no definite shape, while it definitely has a fixed volume. No fixed shape, but yes, the volume is fixed, it's definite. Okay, it does not change. Now, let's come to... Oh yes, one more thing. Let me show you this little device here. Aha! Uh -huh. You realize that uh, it shows a rather fat column here at the side. It has a curve here on this, uh, this part of this device. You realize that, oh here, there are two small little circles. Yeah, a rather large oval and then you have a very small little tube what do you think will happen when I pour my water into this device here let's see okay mm, let's move this aside I think I may need to use a, okay I think this conical flask I'm able to pour the water in let's see what happens All right, do you see that? It takes up whatever shape the, water, the liquid flows into. So it shows us that liquid has no fixed shape. If I have, same thing, let me use the, oops. That's the school bell. Okay, sorry for the interruption. Okay, so you just take the, the shape of any of these columns here. So if I have a Mickey Mouse design here, you just fill up the de Mickey Mouse design. Okay, it shows us that liquid has no fixed shape. But right now, the volume, if I were to pour out this amount of water, would I still get back the 100, milli 100 milliliters? Okay, let's find out. Pour this out. I hope I don't spill any of this. Oh no, I spill it out. Oh dear. I spilled quite a bit. Okay. I realize that it is still around 100 milliliters. Okay, slightly lesser li little. Okay, so that's it for liquids. Now let's 
come to the last but not least, we'll look at solids, liquids, and now let's look at gas. Okay, we have tried this little activity. So now, some of you ask me, is gas or air a matter? Okay, so now we know that definitely air occupies space. How do I know that? So for example, if I were to take, take a balloon here, if I were to blow into this balloon, what will happen? Uh, let me get this out. What will happen if I were to blow into one of these balloons here? Okay, you realize the air will just take up the space inside this balloon. Let's see. Let's stretch this a little bit. Do you see that it occupies the space inside? Yes, therefore, air is... Now we know that it definitely occupies space. It has volume. Alright? Now let's find out another thing. Does it have mass? Can we measure the mass? Let's find out whether it has mass or not. I have four different balloons here. One, two, three, four. And I'm going to bump... They are not inflated. I'm just going to bundle them up using a rubber band. Okay. And now I have a balancing beam here. Let me move it into the picture so that it's clearer for you. A balancing beam. You realize that uh, you'll just... Uh, let's, let's get this to balance first. Okay. Alright. So a balancing beam is quite fair. Now, I know that for the balloon, the rubber itself, the material, it definitely has mass. I put this on a weighing scale, I'm able to weigh it. So if I were to place it at one end, what will happen to the balancing beam? Four balloons. Yes, it will topple to this side. Now, I have some balloons here with me. I have three big ones and one small one. Let's see what happens if I were to hang this on the other end of this balancing beam. If air does not have matter, if air is not matter, you realize that both of them will remain the same because it's four balloons and four balloons. All right, but let's see what happens. Oh, do you see which side is actually heavier now? Yes, the, the side with the balloons where, which are inflated with air. So it tells us that where is the extra mass coming from? It comes from the air inside these balloons. So, does air have mass? Yes, definitely. Alright, okay, let's get this out of the way. Now, back to gas, the properties of gas. When we talk about the shape and volume. Shape, you realize that for gas, just now I've, I've blown a balloon for you, you realize that it just takes up any shape of the container itself, if, uh, of, the, of the container. In this case, a balloon. I blow air into it. It takes up the shape of this balloon. If I blow into, some of you will know, those twisting balloons that are longer, it will just become a long balloon. Okay, if I were to uh, put it into another container, for example, the syringe. I think you have tried this activity. The syringe, you realize that when I pull the plunger, it's not empty inside, but rather it's now occupied with air. There's air inside. So you realize that when you put this against your cheek, you blow, you, when you push it out, oh, you can feel that, uh, the, the wind against your cheeks. Okay, so you realize that Air is definite, uh, occupies the space, but it has no definite shape. Now it just takes up the shape of this syringe. Okay, no definite shape. What about volume? Now, let's try this simple activity. We we'll look at this uh, syringe itself. And we can see that uh, there are different markers here that tells me the amount of air inside. So now if I were to pull it down all the way to... 10 milliliters is it shows here 10 milliliters of air now there's 10 milliliters of air i'll cover the nozzle and i'll press what do you think will happen you realize that hey i can actually push it all the way to maybe even five what happened 
oh, I can even push it until 8. Oh, then you can go back to 10 again. What happened here? It tells me that the volume is changing. If the volume is changing, it tells me that gas itself, does it have a fixed volume? No, it has no fixed volume, no definite volume. So it changes. I can, and it tells me also one more thing, is that air, it can be compact together. And the proper word to use is that it can be compressed. Repeat after me, compressed. Okay, so air, you realize that it can be compressed. Now, let's try another thing. Remember our beaker of red water. Now, the same thing, I'm going to take in about 10 milliliters of water. Now, I have 10 milliliters of water here. Now, again, I put my finger on the, on the, stop, uh, on the nozzle and I press. Arrgh! I can't, I can't get it to move. It remains at 10 milliliters. So the volume is 10 milliliters. No matter how I press it, it cannot be compressed. It also tells me that it is a fixed volume or definite volume. Okay, so right now, it's very clear about liquids. Okay, to sum it up, let me just go through again. Solids, there's definite shape, definite volume. Okay, so regardless of whichever kind of, uh, whichever kind of solid, okay, you realize that it's, it's a fixed shape, fixed volume. Liquids, it takes up whichever shape it is. So there's no definite shape, but remember just now I transferred the liquid from one beaker to another cylinder. It still remains at 100 milliliters. There is definite volume, fixed volume. It doesn't change. Okay, last but not least, your beautiful balloons. Okay, if I were to blow into a straight balloon, it takes up the shape of this uh, long uh, of this straight balloon. If it's a round regular balloon, it becomes a round regular balloon. If it is a Mickey Mouse balloon again, it becomes it takes up the shape of a Mickey Mouse balloon. Okay, and you realize that it has no definite volume. The syringe example. Now, ten milliliters of air. I it can be compressed. Okay, and you realize that. The volume can change from 10 milliliters, 5 milliliters, 8 milliliters. So it can be compressed and it will change. Okay. Now, so we have done a measurement. Okay, a few last, uh, a few tips that you need to take note of. All right, for your when you're reading the measuring cylinder, okay, especially your glass cylinders, you realize that if you look really, really closely, I don't think you can see it on the camera here. Okay, you look very closely, is that there is one straight line and one little curve there. Okay, I'm going to draw this out for you. Okay, one straight line and one little curve. Wait a minute. Let me draw this out for you. Oh, my try paper is here. You realize the beaker when you're reading the amount of liquid. You realize that there's just one small little curve, it seems, in your liquid when you're looking at it at eye level. Remember, when you're measuring, you always look at it at eye level. You do not look from above, you do not look from the side, you do not look from the bottom. Look at it at eye level. And what you need to do is to take the reading from the bottom of the curve. Okay, so for example, if I were to have 50 milliliters, 50 milliliters, you realize that I will be reading it from the bottom of that curve. All right, I will not be reading from the top of that straight line, that top straight line there. I'll be reading at the bottom of the curve. Okay, so it is important when you're measuring to make sure that you fill it up, fill up with water uh, in the, any of the measuring cylinders or beakers and make sure that it is accurate. Okay, another thing on uh, measuring 
weighing scale. Many of you have tried to weigh the uh, uh, different items, the solid items, the liquid as well. You realize that it has mass and you need to be mindful of the measurements. Okay, in between from, from one of the long needles, okay, and there are many short needles in between. So for example, this scale, it says zero grams to 50 grams. In between the 50 grams, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten straight lines. Ten straight lines. So ten straight lines tells me that every one of these smaller little needles, it is plus five. So for example, I have zero. Let me draw this out for you also. I have zero. Zero to fifty. So now the first small little marking there that will be five. Then ten, fifteen, twenty. Okay, can you see this? Alright. And you realize that it is plus five, plus five, twenty-five, thirty, thirty-five, forty, forty-five. It's not very clear here. But each of these is plus five. Different scales may have different readings. Some may be plus one, some may be plus five, so on and so forth. Okay, but now if I were to say, okay, where is 20? 20 grams. 20 grams will be here. I've circled this. 20 grams. Okay, so this is how, uh, if you want to find out more about how to read a kitchen scale, okay, I believe uh, in, at home, maybe you, my, your mom might have one of this in the kitchen. If not, uh, during your science lesson, I think you have a, uh, some time to try out this. Always remember also before you use a weighing scale to make sure that it goes to the zero, it stays on the zero, the needle points at the zero. Okay, this is very, very important. And uh, to calibrate it means that to, to make sure that it's back to zero, there's one little small little knob at the back which you can twist and adjust. And a very important thing, same thing. You must place it on a flat surface, make sure that you're at eye level and then you make the final adjustments to make sure that it's pointing directly at zero. That is to make your reading most accurate. All right. Okay, that's all for today's uh, revision. Okay, I hope that um, it has been clear enough for you. States of matter, anything that has, uh, matter is anything that has mass and volume. Or volume means that it occupies space. Solid, it has a fixed shape, fixed volume. For liquids, it has no fixed shape, but it has a fixed volume. For gas, no fixed shape, no fixed volume. Okay, that's the, those are the main concepts for this topic. Okay, have a great day ahead and I'll see you then, the next episode. Bye.